how are you? It's Luke. How are you doing today, sir? Good. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. I hope your ears were burning last night because I did a lecture last night to future broadcasters and we talked about this book. Dude, this needs oh. to be. Oh, my God. It needs to be in the hands of future leaders when it comes to sharing news as well as those that are in radio, because it is about sacrifice. It is about 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 being honest on that page or wherever you're going to be doing your journalism. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for saying that, and I, and I appreciate you spreading that message, especially to the young kids, because I think more so than any time else with the TikTok, they all think it's instant now, you know, and it's like, it's like no, you're going to be covering a hurricane on a Saturday night. <laughs> you know? Oh, my God, because you're so right about that, because now I've had to change my entire layout of how, how I educate, because I have to treat them like, okay, they think they're stars already, just because of that TikTok right. or YouTube and stuff, and I, you, right. you've got to re, re-grip their, 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 their learning methods. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more. I mean, I think that's one of the things that will be really interesting to see for the future of, of, of news is when you come in with this expectation that you're already established, but you haven't worked today yet in the actual industry, it'll be interesting. The name of the book is Look For Me There. That says a lot because somebody that's walking through a bookstore, they're going to go, whoa, hold on a second. And then when they open the book, they're going to they're gonna really be blown away because they're going to go, oh, I know this person. I mean, is that what you had in mind when you were putting it together? It's an interesting question. The title, it comes from something my dad used to say to me, which was in the pre-cell phone era, which was, look for me there, whether it was after a rock concert yeah. or picking me up from the airport <laughs> or a ball game. The actual story comes from, we were walking in Oriole Park at Camden Yards. It was very hot, mid-Atlantic Cuban summer day, and he was holding my hand, and we got separated. And I fell back in the crush of people, and he, he went back and fished me out, literally, and put his arm around me and said, hey, forever separated, look for me there. And he pointed to a hot dog stand with an Oriole bird on it and pulled me in closely and said, but we'll never be separated. So the title, it's really reflective of me searching for something, which is the, one of the themes in the book. And it was ultimately searching to be my own person, independent of, of him and his legacy, but also mindful of it. So there's a lot of searching, but I think... When you see a title like that, uh, as a reader or as a viewer, you're kind of transported to a place of introspection um, or loss or, or, or whatnot. So that was, that was the goal with the title. Uh, I'm very happy with how it came out. Uh, it's something publishers sure on you for <laughs> so, <laughs> someone said was it hard to write a book i said yeah it's hard to write a book the title was harder <laughs> to get to get to uh but uh, it, it 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 fits it works and the, and the neat thing about it is it's totally um natural it's authentic it's because it's something dad used to say to me all the time to be so transparent when it comes to searching i mean i i'm a daily writer for 29 years and i also defrag i keep a defrag journal where you ask the questions and question the answers what kind of a process did you go through on that journey of searching oh that's a great question so when i left nbc and I knew I wasn't fulfilled. I knew I wanted something else in life. I just did not quite know right. what it was. But I knew that if I stayed on the same path, I would not be happy. And I would not be fulfilled. And it's a hard thing to admit because on paper and in the public eye, you seemingly have everything. You're on this ascent. You're, gonna, you're doing great things. People, and it brings others joy. Uh, it brings your family joy. Uh, but if it's not working for you, you have to do a real self-evaluation. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that I found great value in was journaling. And maybe that's because of the habit of keeping up reporters' notebooks. I always did that old school. Some of my colleagues would type away on laptops. I always would put the pen to the paper on the reporters' notebooks because I felt I had more control and it was easier to, to understand. But when I journaled, I was able, through the course of my own journey, I almost have a living record yes. of what I was feeling in the moment, what I was being, what, what I was perceiving. And what's very interesting is when I went back to go write the book and I started to go through these journals and some of it I thought was, oh, this is just going to be stream of consciousness. You don't realize, I think, intuitively how much you actually put out on the page, <laughs> even if it's just, even if it's just bullet points, right? <laughs> and you put, you really put yourself out there. And then to, to couple it with where we are in modern times, and this is something I tell young people, if you journal, 
you can then take the feelings that you have in all these pictures you take every single yep. day yep. Yep. and put them together. And I had over 100,000 photos of traveling. Wow. And one of the great exercises when writing was I would go to the journal and I could match up the date to the photo, and then suddenly that photo becomes even more alive. Because you look at a picture and you will remember a few things, right? Like, oh, this is where I was, these are the people I was with. But sometimes you look at a picture and you're like, you don't remember the internal emotions you may have been feeling. And I was able to look at the picture, match it up with the date and go, oh, here I was in Vietnam. Oh, I was feeling this that day. Okay. And it really made for a, a, a very interesting writing process. See, that I, I love that because that's exactly it. But now I've got to ask you this question, Luke. What happens yeah. when, when your day on, on Earth is up? Because my wife wants to cremate it with me. And I'm going, no, it's not. No, no, <laughs> it's not mine. It's, it's for whoever is going to read it in the future. Do you have to go through this too? No, I mean, I think one of the things that's so important about the written word is people interpret it in different ways, yes. right? And I think you as an author, as a writer, you're trying to kind of steer them in the direction of what you're trying to say, but they're going to, uh, they're going to respond the, the way they want to respond, and that's okay. I think that's part of the beauty of putting it in the outside world. What I think is very interesting now and my mother just did this, and I'm very thankful for it, is you're starting to see a pattern of people who have been in an industry for a long time, no matter what it is, sit down and give their oral histories yeah. and just transcribe them. And I think that's something that will be really valuable to the next generation. I mean, there's a lot of people who might not care, but I was a history nerd. Still, I'm a history nerd, history major in college. One of the things I loved was primary source documents, <laughs> right? Because the primary source documents – transports you to what was going on in the time yeah. and if you it, there's a reason why they're so valuable is we can we can react analytically forever right someone's opinion about something written a hundred years later i want to read what it was like on the ground yeah. and i think that's one of the most beautiful things about you know your writing or anybody's writing is that it, it might not uh have an impact right away but down the line if some kid picks it up and goes oh that's what was going on at this time and this is how this person interpreted it that's really valuable so uh I, it, it it's never bad it's never bad writing is always good <laughs> do you have a favorite writing instrument i mean it's, i mean that that's one of the things that to me it's like a guitar it's with me at all times and and i've got one that's been with me for 26 years a writing instrument so what I, I have certain pens that I use. I like to write in blue ink. Oh, yeah. Blue ink calms me down for whatever reason. <laughs> I'm a big believer in um, different places where I write will have different energy that yep. I tap into. Yep. So when I was writing the book, the first draft, I actually wrote it at my late grandmother's old apartment in San Francisco. And there was three places where I would write. I would either write on the porch outside of the garden, so outside being very much in nature, or I'd write it at her old kitchen table, or I would write it sort of suspended back on the couch, uh, just sort of lounging. <laughs> and those were the sort of three places that I would write, and those were different energies to me. There was sort of the, the dutiful work of the kitchen table, there was the being in nature outside, and then there was a sort of more relaxing, okay, I'm going to see, see what comes. And that ended up working out. But I'm always fascinated with people's writing styles. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, the, other, the other tidbit is I would always write, and, and I try to encourage this with kids, um, with a candle. And what I mean by that oh, is there's yeah. something mentally about lighting the candle, the flame of creativity, the flame of consciousness, whatever you want to call it, is there. And that was really helpful to me. And then when I was done, I would blow it out. And so that was, you know, the, 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 the course of the day. So there's little things like that that are very important in the writing process that uh, they might sound corny to someone who doesn't do it, but it means a lot. And I love your analogy to music because I think there's so much similarity to writing a book and, and creating music um, to the point of where I often say, you know, when you end up selecting the chapters, it's like selecting the songs on an album. Right, because I was like, I got a hundred more songs I'd love to play, but they don't fit on this album. <laughs> you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Luke. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, thank you so much, Joe. You're very kind. Well, you be brilliant today, okay, sir? Take care.